when I, uh, it's like when people go to get help, they come into addiction program or whatever it may be. People come to get help. Everybody starts off in survival. Nobody wants to be there. I mean, really, people would rather be home with their families and all the other stuff. So they first do it because they know it's good for them. They know they got to do it. So there's a place that you start in survival because you know you got to do it no matter what. And then you get to a place of surrender where you say, I want to do it. I want this now. See, but the it off constantly coming. It's like peeling an apple or peeling an onion. Sorry, apples are good, onions make you cry. <laughs> so, as that onion is being peeled, you find yourself changing. And tears begin to come. See, because survival always has to do with pride. Surrender, you become humble. And you're realizing that everything you've been trying to do don't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. I always ask people, well, man, I've been doing it. Well, how's it working for you? Uh, it's not. It's right. And it's not going to work for you. Because we always try to get ourselves out of trouble and fix it. And when we do, we just make a bigger mess. Amen. We try to calculate and have human reasoning, common sense. God's not of common sense in the natural realm. He'll tell you to do things that just don't make sense. But if you surrender and you listen, he brings things to you. One of the things that I've always learned was I, I continue to do the same thing I'm doing until he throws me out, makes another move, shuts the door, or something else opens up. Because he wants us to get into a place of complete trust where there's surrender. Knowing that he does far above all we could ever ask or think. He brings us life and life abundantly. He makes a way where there seems to be no way, but there's something you got to do. You have to wait. You know what a waiter does? He serves. While he serves, he's waiting. Waiting for what? The next thing God has not planned for him. Amen? That's how we live. That is a lifestyle that you and I come. It's a lifestyle of surrender, not survival. Oh, glory. Ephesians 2 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Well, let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. And once you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Again, at one point, we are disobedient to surrender. <laughs> we are disobedient to surrender of God. We are rebellious to his plan, and we are hard-hardened hard -hard to his correction. Because God's correction always brings protection and escape. But because we were in a survival mode, and not a surrender more. We are disobedient to God's way of escape. We were rebellious to his plan, hard-hardened to his corrections, not willing to wait, trying to do it in our own strength, and going right back in that cycle, again, a survival, backslidden, then looking for fulfillment in the flesh. This is where people become fighters for self instead of fighters for God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, survival to surrender. <clears throat> 
one of the things we want to be able to do is catch ourselves. Catch ourselves before we get caught up and imprisoned back into uh, survival mode. You know, once you begin to find yourself in frustration and anger and anxiousness, push, anxiety, offense, all of these things are nothing but fruits of survival. Amen? Once you sense these things, you got to step right out and say, hold on a minute, homie. Step out. Stop. Recognize it. Call on the living God. Repent. Lord, forgive me for trying to do it in my strength again. Forgive me for moving without you telling me. Listen, all of us fall into it. There's not one person here who doesn't fall into it. The whole thing is, is the more you practice it, the less you fall in it. Oh, glory. In verse 1, 2 Timothy 3, 1. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Because these are fruits of survival. These are fruits of survival. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall do what? Trust. Oh, glory. Let's go a little further. For it says, this is the sword of those who creep into households and make captives of men and women, loaded down with lusts, led away by various lusts and sins, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, never able to reach that place of surrender. It's almost like a temporary thing. Do you ever notice somebody, uh, somebody's always up and down, up and down? You know, they're up one day, down the next day. Uh, one day they're oppressed, one day they're joyful, one day, nah, nah, nah. there's not a consistency. It's because they've not reached the level of surrender. And because they haven't reached the level of surrender, they haven't reached the level of death. And because they haven't reached the level of death or surrender, they haven't reached the level of trust in God. That means they don't know him enough. And that's one of the things. Look, when you really know him, when you really know him, you live a life of surrender. You know that you believe his word that says all things can work to the good. You believe it. You stand on it. You feed off of it. You don't feed off of other people's opinions. You don't feed off of other people's emotions. You get fed by God. Because you know that when you're fed by him, he's going to bring it to pass. The only reason why you're struggling and people struggle is because they're not filled enough with the spirit or eating enough of his word. And if you do, you'll fall into a place of surrender. Okay. I'm going to trust you, Lord. However it's going to happen, this is the door you open, I'm going to go through it. Show me what I'm supposed to do. And wait. Wait. Amen? Now, I'm not telling you wait as a car is approaching you. Jeez, Lord, I need to know what to do. Get the heck out of the way. I mean, those are things you don't wait on. In verse 8, now as Janus and Jabris resisted Moses... So did these also resist the truth? Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the what? Faith. Why? Because survival is not a faith. Only surrender is. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. Powerful. A form of surrender, he says. But actually, they're survivalists. 
never reaching a level of trust in God, living a life of fear, anxiety, stress, pride, self-preservation. The runners, not fighters. Runners, not fighters. Fighters for what? Fighters for God's presence. In Ephesians chapter 4. You know, we had a call from, to our office from some strange person. <coughs> and Viv brought it to me and said, somebody called it and said, you need to teach on sur- what, what, survival mode. And I just threw it aside. Eh. Well, we talk about it all the time. And today the Lord says to me, I want you to talk about survival to surrender. Okay. <laughs> what was that call a couple days ago? Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, no problem. I guess we need this right now. But that's what's happening because there's so much influence everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, the influence is getting stronger everywhere. And verse uh, 17, Ephesians. It's 417. Let's speak. And this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. And when I, uh, when I, uh, it's like when people go to get help, they come into addiction program or whatever it may be. People come to get help. Everybody starts off in survival. Nobody wants to be there. I mean, really, people would rather be home with their families and all the other stuff. So they first do it because they know it's good for them. They know they got to do it. So there's a place that you start in survival because you know you got to do it no matter what. And then you get to a place of surrender where you say, I want to do it. I want this now. See, but the whole thing is, is the shedding off the flesh. Shutting it off. Constantly coming. It's like peeling an apple. Or peeling an onion, sorry. Apples are good. Onions make you cry. <laughs> so as that onion is being peeled, you find yourself changing. And tears begin to come. See, because survival always has to do with pride. Surrender, you become humble. And you're realizing that everything you've been trying to do don't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. I always ask people, well, man, I've been doing it. Well, how's it working for you? Uh, it's not. It's right. And it's not going to work for you. Because we always try to get ourselves out of trouble and fix it. And when we do, we just make a bigger mess. We try to calculate and have human reasoning, common sense. God's not of common sense in the natural realm. He'll tell you to do things that just don't make sense. But if you surrender and you listen, he brings things to you. One of the things that I've always learned was I I continue to do the same thing I'm doing until he throws me out, makes another move, shuts the door, or something else opens up. Because he wants us to get into a place of complete trust where there's surrender. Knowing that he does far above all we could ever ask or think. He brings us life and life abundantly. He makes a way where there seems to be no way, but there's something you got to do. You have to wait. You know what a waiter does? He serves. While he serves, he's waiting. Waiting for what? The next thing God hasn't planned for him. Amen? That's how we live. 
That is a lifestyle that you and I come. It's a lifestyle of surrender, not survival. Oh, glory. Ephesians 2, in verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. And once you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Again, at one point we are disobedient to surrender. <laughs> we are disobedient to surrender of God. We are rebellious to his plan, and we are hard hardest, hard hardened to his correction. Because God's correction always brings protection and escape. But because we were in a survival mode and not a surrender mode, we are disobedient to God's way of escape. We were rebellious to his plan, hard-hardened to his corrections, not willing to wait, trying to do it in our own strength, and going right back in that cycle, again, a survival. Backslidden. Then looking for fulfillment in the flesh. This is where people become fighters for self. Instead of fighters for God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3. Survival to surrender. <clears throat> One of the things we want to be able to do is catch ourselves. Catch ourselves before we get caught up and imprisoned back into survival mode. You know, once you begin to find yourself in frustration and anger and anxiousness, push, anxiety, offense, all of these things are nothing but fruits of survival. Amen? Once you sense these things, you got to step right out and say, hold on a minute. Homie, step out. Stop. Recognize it. Call on the living God. Repent. Lord, forgive me for trying to do it in my strength again. Forgive me for moving without you telling me. Listen, all of us fall into it. There's not one person here who doesn't fall into it. The whole thing is, is the more you practice it, the less you fall in it. Oh, glory. In verse 1, 2 Timothy 3, 1. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And they'll have a form of godliness, but they'll be denying its power and from such people turn around. Why? Because these are fruits of survival. These are fruits of survival. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall do what? Trust. Oh, glory. Let's go a little further. For it says, this is the sword of those who creep into households and make captives of men and women, loaded down with lusts, led away by various lusts and sins, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, never able to reach that place of surrender. It's almost like a temporary thing. Do you ever notice somebody, uh, somebody's always up and down, up and down? You know, they're up one day, down the next day. Uh, one day they're oppressed, one day they're joyful, one day, no, no, no. there's not a consistency. It's because they've not reached the level of surrender. 
And because they haven't reached the level of surrender, they haven't reached the level of death. And because they haven't reached the level of death or surrender, they haven't reached the level of trust in God. That means they don't know him enough. And that's one of the things. Look, when you really know him, when you really know him, you live a life of surrender. You know that you believe his word that says all things can work to the good. You believe it. You stand on it. You feed off of it. You don't feed off of other people's opinions. You don't feed off of other people's emotions. You get fed by God. Because you know that when you're fed by Him, He's going to bring it to pass. The only reason why you're struggling and people struggle is because they're not filled enough with the Spirit or eating enough of His Word. And if you do, you'll fall into a place of surrender. Okay. I'm going to trust you, Lord. However it's going to happen, this is the door you open, I'm going to go through it. Show me what I'm supposed to do. And wait. Wait. Amen? Now, I'm not telling you wait as a car is approaching you. Jeez, Lord, I need to know what to do. Get the heck out of the way. <laughs> I mean, those are things you don't wait on. In verse 8, now as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the what? Faith. Why? Because survival is not a faith. Only surrender is. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. Powerful. A form of surrender, he says, but actually they're survivalists, never reaching a level of trust in God, living a life of fear, anxiety, stress, pride, self-preservation. Hmm. The runners, not fighters. Runners, not fighters. Fighters for what? Fighters for God's presence. In Ephesians chapter 4. You know, we had a call from, to our office from some strange person. <coughs> and Viv brought it to me and said, somebody called it and said, you need to teach on sur what, what, survival mode. And I just threw it aside. Eh. Well, we talk about it all the time. And today the Lord says to me, I want you to talk about survival to surrender. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was that call a couple days ago? Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, no problem. I guess we need this right now. But that's what's happening because there's so much influence everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, the influence is getting stronger everywhere. In verse uh, 17, Ephesians 4, 17. Let's speak. And this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in fertility of their mind having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, because if you had heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? Put off survival mode. Amen? Put off concerning your former conduct, which was what? Survival. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful laws, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind, because that's where the battle is. That you put on the what? New man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and what? Holiness. Holiness. Fighters for the new life in Christ. Fighters for his will, his purpose, 
the kingdom and his presence. Maintaining the second and third level chamber position in the tabernacle. Departing from evil company and hating evil works. Living a life that pleases the creator, not living a life that pleases man. We live a different order now. There's a different order of priorities, associations, entertainments, music, movies. Everything is different. Everything is in a more of a divine order. No matter what's going on, God, 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 wait, 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 trust, trust, trust in everything we do. And then there's another place, seek, seek, seek. In verse 25, Therefore, putting away what? Lying. That's a fruit of survival. Let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but don't sin. Why? Because sin is associated with survival. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Same thing with anger. Nor give place to the devil. Let him who st stole steal no longer. Why? Because that is a fruit of survival. But rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give to him who is need. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth like negative, oppressive. But what is good for necessary what? Edification. Thank you, Jesus. All things are going to work to the good. Thank you, Lord. If you're for me, who can be against me? Thank you that you who are in me is greater than you in the world. Thank you, Lord. And it, nothing seems, everything seems difficult right now, Lord, but I know you're going to pull me out of this because you make a way where there seems to be no way. What are you doing? You're putting your trust in him by confession. You, confession, you're connecting with him through faith. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And what is grace? God's plan of what? Escape. <laughs> And do not grieve the what? Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness. This is all fruits of survival. Wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice. Now he speaks of surrender fruit. But be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6. Hallelujah. In verse 31. Matthew 6, 31, I think, yeah. Therefore, do not what? Do not what? Worry. 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 Is that survival or surrender? Survival. Do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Or how are we going to pay our bills? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But do what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then what? And all things will be added to you. So we've got to become seekers. Seek God's way instead of man's way. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Oh, hallelujah. So in this, he says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness, God will make a way. He'll show you exactly what you're supposed to do, but don't go in to survival mode. Stay in surrender mode. Psalm 40.
Hallelujah. You know, a good example of survival mode is a little kid that uh, wants something and you say no. <laughs> and even though it may be harmful for that child, but the child doesn't realize that. And so he goes into a temper tantrum. Freaks out. You got to pick him up, put him in a closet. <laughs> Tell him to seek the Lord. <laughs> it's like, man. But it's amazing how many adults act the same way. No trust. Oh, yes. Psalm 40, what does it say? I did what? I waited, did what? I waited. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me and he heard my cry. He also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in what? Fear and will also what? Trust in the Lord. Ooh. Blesses the man who does what? Makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would... I declare and speak of them. They are more than it can be what? Numbered. So he wants more for you. Listen, he's coming to bring us life and life abundantly. But you know what? I don't think people realize all the time that <clears throat> even when God puts something on your heart, it doesn't mean it's time. Because one of the things the Lord showed me one time, and I was waiting, I was like, well, okay, you put this on my heart. Why isn't this happening? Because he said, you know how many people I got to deal with? You know, if you I got to deal with to make happen what I'm getting for you, I didn't ever realize it. Thinking, oh yeah, you got to deal with all of these people, and some of them are disobedient. So he's got to find change the things around to get somebody to become obedient. So why? So everything can fall into place just for me, and just for you. So he wants us to stay in a place of trust, which is. Surrender, not survival. Well, gosh, Lord, it's not happening yet. What? That means I got to have to do it. Well, you're going to blow it. And you're going to miss what God is trying to bring. Happens all the time. Oh. Survival works is of the flesh. It brings a curse because it sows in the flesh. But surrender work is of the Spirit. It brings blessing. Survival works is of the flesh. It brings a curse. Surrender works is of the Spirit. It brings blessing. Proverbs 3. Again, every one of us has fallen into us, you know. It's just a matter of bringing things to remembrance again and recognizing it. And again, the more you practice it, the less you get distracted and do it. Proverbs 3. There are people that have gone from surrender to survival and they've stayed in it for most of their Christian life. To me, it's like management and not freedom. Proverbs chapter 3, in verse uh, 1, please. He says, what? My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Why? Because his law is his promises. It is his covenant. His commands is his promises. He's saying, look at, don't lose sight of these things. I'm faithful. Even when you're faithless, I'll stay faithful. Just get your butt back into divine order and get faithful again in surrender mode and we'll meet. And I'll release. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody uh, there? For length of days and long life and peace, they will what? Add to you. 
Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your forehead or your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and in who? Man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and stop leaning on your own understanding because what happens? You're going to fall into survival. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will what? And he will what? He's going to direct your path, as long as you maintain the arena of acknowledging him. That means you maintain an area of seeking, trusting. You keep doing what you're doing until he truly makes the move. <clears throat> Do not be wise in your what? Oh, yeah. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be what? Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Now look at the verse, next verse. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions with the first fruits of all of your increase. Why? Because he says, if you'll do this, increase will come to you. So that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, my daughter, don't despise my correction, the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the love, the Lord loves, he what? Corrects just as a father, the son in whom he delights. In other words, correction brings direction. It brings protection and direction. Amen? Listen, everybody wants drive through stuff. I love drive through Everybody wants it now. But I've learned that it doesn't happen now. And when you come into that place willing to trust, rest, and wait that the finest comes. Why grab hold of what we call good that ends up blowing it and why not wait for the best? Amen? Um, Jeremiah 38. Jeremiah 38. Survival to surrender. In verse 17. Jeremiah 38, verse 17. And Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Thus is the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, if you surely surrender to the king of Babylon, princes, then your soul shall live. This city shall not be burned with fire, and you and your house shall live. Now, this is, does not make any sense. But God was telling him, Look at if you'll do this, you're going to live, and the city won't burn. If you just surrender, I got it. But common sense says, well, man, that's our enemy. You want me to surrender to him? Remember, the king of Babylon was against Israel. It didn't make any sense. Verse 18, but if you do not surrender to the king of Babylon's princes, then this city shall be given into the hand of the Chaldeans and they shall burn it with fire and you shall not escape from their hand. Does everybody get it? See, you and I can't live on an area of common sense. Not when it comes to God. We live on an area of trust, seek, wait, and die. Second Chronicles 20. See, people living out of fear have to have common sense. It's got to be common sense all the time. That's intellectual stuff. But God's way of escape is a lot better. <laughs> Second Chronicles 20.
Hallelujah. Listen, you want to marry the right person? You want to buy the right car? You want to buy the... Does everybody get it? That takes surrender. And when you can't afford it, God will bring it. If you'll wait. If you'll wait. Does everybody get it? <laughs> I think everybody can witness to that. <laughs> Verse 17. 2 Chronicles 20, 17. Now this was the king of Judah and he was being attacked from all sides. There was no way they can defeat their enemies because they were totally outnumbered. So they sought the Lord. And a word came from, from them from the Lord and he said, you will not need to what? Fight in this battle. Just do what? Position yourselves into what? Surrender. Does everybody get it? Position yourself into surrender mode and not survival. And listen what I want to tell you. He said, position yourselves, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. And do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is what? With you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head. He was the king of Judah. And, and with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the uh, Koinites and the children of the Korahites and stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and what? High. They were changing the atmosphere. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness in Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall what? Be established. Believe in his word and his prophets and you shall what? Prosper. And when he had consulted with the people and he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and they were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now that doesn't make sense. Praise and worship team before the weapons of carnality. So the army followed the praise and worship team. I love it. That's what we need destroyers with praise and worship on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. North Korea won't know what to do. <laughs> we can put big speakers on there, man. <laughs> All along the coastline, around the peninsula. Just praise and worship in the Lord. We'll get about four or five destroyers out there, aircraft carriers, everybody dancing in the spirit. I'm telling you, the principalities will come down. There'll be salvation to North Korea. And rocket, man, will get saved. <laughs> He'll become a rock and roller for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 22. Now when they began to sing and praise the Lord... Did what? Set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, of Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy what? Man, they were killing each other. And they were supposed to all working together. These are all the militaries that are coming against Judah. <laughs> they end up killing each other. Because God said ambushes. He brought confusion in the enemy's camp. And when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their what? Dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. What was the end result? Prosperity. Did everybody get it? It was a release of God's prosperity. Prosperity. 
Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> First Peter chapter 2. Glory. First Peter chapter 2. Survival to surrender. <laughs> First Peter chapter 2. Did you ever get a notice in the mail? That's something that was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Like you ran a red light and you didn't realize it and sent you something in it. Or, or, or you didn't pay something and you thought you, or you thought you paid it or you forgot it or you paid it and they lost it or something to that degree. What does everybody go into usually the first time? Survival. Oh man, I got to do something. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait a minute, Lord. You, know, you see all, you know it all. You know the end result. Now, please give me the wisdom that I need to do this. Acknowledge me in all of your ways, and I'll direct your paths. Quit picking up the phone. Go to the throne. Amen? Oh, yes. And don't get into the butt butt. Amen? Because butt butt is survival. <laughs> and it makes things slow down. <laughs> That's why it's but, 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 but. First, first Peter chapter 2. Is everybody there? In verse 1. Hallelujah. Therefore do what? Laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and e all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted, the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also are living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word. Why? Because they don't trust to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Powerful. Very powerful. You know, so many times, and this is where that false entitlement comes in, too. This is one of the things the enemy likes to play with us. Well, Lord, I, I've tithed. Well, Lord, I've worshipped. Well, Lord, I've done this. Well, Lord, I've done that. That's too many eyes. Remember something. God is still dealing with other people. He's still dealing with obedient or disobedient individuals trying to make arrangements for you. Give him a break. <laughs> Philippians 4. <laughs> Before he buries you alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, there's sometimes things just keep happening and happening and happening. It's like, really? Really? Again? 
Okay. Again. <laughs> I trust you, Lord. I trust you. I trust you. I'm going to sow your way out of it. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Even though every voice from hell just showed up. <laughs> you're this. You're this. You're that. You're that. You're that, you're that, you're that. No! I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. Then you take authority and get rid of those voices. Amen. Philippians 4, 4, it's our favorite scripture. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men that the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. It's the same thing as seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. With thanksgiving and let your request be made known to him. Hello? And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In other words, he's going to make a way. Oh, yes. 1 Peter 5. In verse 5. So going from survival to surrender means that it's a constant surrender. So even the word says submit to God and then you'll be able to resist the devil. Amen. So when you fall back into survival, it's difficult to resist the devil. In fact, he's the one that put you there. <clears throat> Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, adversary <laughs> the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. What's he looking for? He's trying to get you in survival mode because he knows he can eat you up there it says resist them steadfast in the what faith because survival mode has no faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world but may the god of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by christ jesus after you have suffered a while perfect establish strengthen and settle you so that you don't do it again and so that we don't repeat those things. But we stay in an area. We begin to recognize more and more. We become more sensitive to the area of survival. In other words, you can smell it and taste it coming. I'm going to close in Ephesians 5. Starting at verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Is everybody there? And walk in what? Walk in love as Christ also has loved us. So what is he saying? Imitate God. I never saw God be anxious for nothing. <laughs> in fact, he paid the ultimate price. He reached the level of death where no one can reach. <laughs> but his death brought life. And the death to yourself brings life. <laughs> the therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Why? Because we're his offspring. And walk in love as Christ also loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For you know that no foreigner, kid, or unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and, and God. I'm telling you, there's going to be a real lot of upset believers. And he says, you can't come in here. You are disqualified. Therefore, just as... Wait a minute, where am I going? Therefore, do not. There. Wait a minute. Let, up. Let no one do what? 
deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So he, what is he saying? He said, man, the devil's going to come and try and trick you. And he's going to use a person to try and get you in survival mode. Oh, really? That happened to you too? Me too! People are going to freak out. Oh, I can't believe this happened to you. Praise God. Who cares? Let go, let God. Who are you going to trust in? Yourself? Snap. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once what? Darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and what? Truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. You ain't going to find that out unless you seek. Unless you wait. Unless you trust. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And that's called expose survival mode. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? The days are what? Are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be what? Drunk. Don't be drunk because you didn't get what you want, which is dissipation. But be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the what? Fear of God. Remember, there's always somebody worse conditioned than you. Amen? Praise God. Think about that. There's a lot of people that are in terrible condition. So we need not to go back to survival, but maintain a position of surrender, knowing that God is for you and not against you. Yeah, you got to do things because you got to do them, because they're good for you. There are people that hate vegetables, and they got to eat them because they know they're good for them. <laughs> but if they dress them up enough, they begin to like them. Amen? It's the same thing with everything. Just endure. It's going to work to the good. You keep, look at, I like this. Ooh, I like the vent, you'll like it. <laughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. We repent for every time we've fallen into a survival mode. Help us to recognize, Papa, so that we may be well-pleasing to you. And let us live a life of surrender where we trust, where we can rest, and where we can wait, knowing that if you be for us, who can be against us? In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.